Hey everyone, welcome to Hype Online. Bienvenidos I hope you're excited about tonight's vivo. broadcast because we are excited hype. about tonight's broadcast. And the reason is because the Gleaner representative is here que el in the building. And we're going to be doing a little bit of meet and greet with him y vamos after a while. A poderlo Also, if También, you would, please interact with si us. Usted, usted Go ahead and share this broadcast. Um, put it out there so that others can see it as well. And if you share the broadcast, you will be entered in for a chance to win this visa a gift para tener una so please go ahead and hit share at this time. But please interact with us. Send us your prayer request. If there's anything that you would like for us to pray about later on, we want to know about it so that we can bind our faith together and pray on, um, on your behalf. And we just want to do that here tonight. So if you would, interact with us and, uh, throughout this broadcast. As you can see, we have our new t-shirts in, and we are very excited about these t-shirts. I think they turned out great, and we are very grateful to have these here. And at this time, I want to just show you what the English looks like, the English shirts. And we also have Spanish shirts. My wife here, she has the Spanish shirts. So if you want one of these shirts, we would like for you to go ahead and put your order in tonight at the end of the broadcast. Um, we have a limited supply of these, and we only have certain sizes available. But if you want one here in the United States, it will cost you $20, and that will be delivered right to your door. Now, if you are ordering from outside of the United States, it is a little bit of an upcharge uh, for the delivery. And you also got to keep in mind that there are certain countries which we are not able to deliver to right now because of the pandemic. So please, go ahead and put that order in as soon as possible. As most of you are aware, my wife was involved in a serious horse riding accident on June 2nd. She is recovering very well, and we're very, very grateful for that. She suffered uh, multiple skull fractures, brain bleed, contusions, uh, and spent a little bit of time in the hospital. And many of you had reached out to us during that time, and we want you to know that we are extremely grateful for your concern and for your prayers that you have prayed. Yes, and I want to just take just a moment to say that I appreciate each and every one of you that has prayed for me on behalf of my family. I, I am so grateful. Um, there's, there's just been such an outpouring of love and support, and above all else, uh, the prayers that has been sent up on behalf of myself and my family. Um, if anything, um, I, I have learned how great of a privilege it is knowing that no matter where we are, uh, there's, there's friends, there's loved ones, there's church family all over that, that are there in the time of need that lift you up when you need lifting up in prayer. And I, I just can't thank you. I can't um, say thank you or I, we love you enough for all that you have done for us. Um, please continue to remember me in prayer, my family in prayer, as I continue to heal. Um, no, I'm not 100% yet, but I am well on my way, and I am forever grateful for what the Lord has done for me. I truly believe that he has worked miracles upon miracles in my life, and I will be forever grateful for that. And let me also encourage you that if you ever find yourself in a trial, reach out to the Lord. Reach out to those that are around you, because they will be there to support you, just as you all have been there to support me and my family during this time. We love you all, and thank you once again for your prayers. We want to transition into a time of worship. Here tonight, we have the England youth that will be leading our worship, and we are very excited about this. So I encourage you that are watching here tonight just to join in and worship the Lord with us. It doesn't matter where you're at. It doesn't matter where you're sitting or um, what, you're going, what you're doing right now, or what's going on around you, just worship the Lord. You can just take a moment and pause and just get into the presence of the Lord. So at this time, the England youth will lead us into our worship.
We thank the Lord for a beautiful time of worship here tonight. We also are very grateful uh, to the youth there in England for their work in putting together um, this time of worship that we've had. We are very grateful for that. May the Lord bless you. If you remember in the last Hype broadcast, I preached a message titled, How Will You Emerge from the COVID-19 Pandemic? Well, here we are three months later, and we're still in the middle of a pandemic. Some people expected this to have ended by now, but whatever your expectation has been, you must not lose sight that God is still in control. It doesn't matter what happens in the world that we can't control, we must remember God is still in control. Regardless of what your feelings are concerning this virus, the Bible is the final authority on all things present and all things which are to come. Some ministers believe this virus is setting the stage for a cashless society, a one-world government, and eventually for the mark of the beast. But I don't have the answer as to if this virus is what ushers all of these things in, but one can't help but to wonder the uniqueness of this pandemic for our modern age. For those watching tonight and searching for answers, the best place to begin is in Matthew chapter 24. And that's what I'd like to share with you tonight, some thoughts concerning Matthew chapter 24. Beginning at verse 1, it says, And Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, There shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? Prior to this, Jesus spoke to a multitude of people, but now he speaks to his disciples. He brings his church in for the direct and personal instruction. His church asks for a sign for his coming, because they are the ones that are most concerned about His return. They did not want to be caught off guard, but they desired to be well prepared. And that is how we should desire right now, today as the church, is to be well prepared for the coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. This is why the church today should concern herself with the signs of Christ's coming. Because a complacent church is an unprepared church. It would do us well to study the scriptures about the five wise and the five foolish virgins that went out to meet the bridegroom. We can learn a lot about this in that scripture. And I like to read on in verse 4. It says, And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Jesus begins describing the signs 
by identifying deceit. This has been a tool of Satan since the very beginning of time, and he still uses it today. Jesus said people would be deceived by believing in another Christ. Now, I want you to remember that at this moment, he's talking to his disciples. He's talking with those that walked alongside of him for all of this time. He is the one that's telling them that people will be deceived by another Christ. So, Jesus said people would be deceived by believing in another Christ. The Apostle Paul also spoke on this subject in 2 Corinthians chapter 11. Verse 3 and 4 it says, But I fear, lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtility, so your minds should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if ye receive another spirit, which ye have not received, or another gospel, which ye have not accepted, ye might well bear with him. Now, Matthew chapter 24, verse 6, it says this, And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled. There is a reason that Jesus made this statement, that ye be not troubled. It could be because these things will affect where we live. I think sometimes in our minds when we hear of tragedies or trouble, we think of it as being in a far country or in a distant state. But we have to understand that this trouble may be right around us, exactly where we live. But Jesus said, be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Verse 7. For nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines and pestilences, which is what we're dealing right now with the disease, and earthquakes in diverse places. Have you ever wondered why Jesus named all of these things as signs of his coming? For thousands of years, the earth has seen wars. We've heard of wars. The earth has seen famines and earthquakes. So why name something that has already been occurring? I believe it's because what Jesus is speaking of here are things which will happen at a magnitude that we have never known before. Yes, the earth has seen earthquakes for hundreds and thousands of years, but I believe in the last days we're going to see it on a magnitude that's never been heard of. The same goes for pestilences. And famines, we're seeing things on a magnitude that we have never witnessed before. Just in the last 75 years, wars have consisted of weapons of mass destruction. And why are we dealing with famines when farming is so advanced? The same can be considered with diseases. We are dealing with a pandemic in the most modern medical world known to mankind. These signs are starting to happen on a level never known before. No matter the counter efforts taken by mankind, it seems like it's never enough. It doesn't matter what kind of technology that we might invent in order to help feed the hungry, there's still someone in the world that is hungry. It doesn't matter what kind of vaccines are created and, and medical advances is made, there seems to be some kind of disease that pops up from time to time such as what we are dealing with now. Verse 8, it says all of these are the beginning of sorrows. Verse 8 is talking about people who will be in anguish due to the calamities which precede the coming of the Messiah. Maybe God is using this as a last effort to get people's attention and to get them to turn to Him. Amen. Historically, every time our nation has suffered devastation, as what we experience, just for an example, on September 11, 2001, the people would turn to God for help and for comfort. Suddenly, you find people in leadership positions that want to call the nation to prayer. We have mayors and, and other politicians that are telling people to call out to the Lord for help in those devastating times. 
Since this pandemic began, I've wondered if we have entered into the beginning of sorrows. People are suffering because of the economic breakdown throughout the entire world. It's not just affecting one or two countries, but this has affected every country in the world. People are suffering. Businesses are permanently going out of business. Not counting all the people who has suffered directly because of the virus. Many people have died. Many people have, uh, have been sick. And many have recovered. We thank the Lord for that. But the church should be extremely attentive to the next few verses. Now I want you to listen closely in verse 9. It says, Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you, and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Hatred toward Christianity is intensifying. We need to understand that. It's getting worse. It's, it, it, things aren't getting better. But the hatred is increasing all around us. Even in the most Christian nations, hatred is increasing. The spirit of Antichrist is on the move and pushing harder than ever before. As a matter of fact, Jesus even said that the spirit Antichrist was already in the world 2,000 years ago. And so we find that same spirit working even harder today. That spirit will be personified in the beast and in the false prophet. Eventually, there will be a face to go along with the spirit of Antichrist. We must not be taken by surprise when we deal with the intense hatred and attacks which are designed by the enemy. This pandemic is putting Christians to a spiritual test. Amen. If we struggle in our relationship with God during this pandemic, or maybe during the times when we weren't able to get to church because we couldn't gather together in, in groups of ten or more people, and many of us are having to stay home or stay isolated. If we can't keep a good relationship with the Lord in those times when we can't make it to church, then we're going to struggle for sure in the times of persecution. Verse 10. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. I've never known of a time when people have been offended at just about everything. Any little thing people are offended by. Society is changing everything that offends them. But mainly, they are offended at the Word of God. They are offended at what this says. Because they don't want to live up to this. This is the standard right here. This is what we should live up to. But the world don't want to live up to that standard. And therefore, that hatred is directed towards Christ, towards Christians, towards anything about Christ. Verse 11 says, And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure unto the end. Now, if you're watching there tonight, I want you to say that with me. But he that shall endure unto the end. That's very important. The same shall be saved. I don't know about you, but I want to endure unto the very end. I want to be faithful. I want to be one of those that the Lord looks down upon and says, This is my servant with whom I am well pleased. Is that what you desire tonight? Because we have to be faithful. We have to endure even in the most trying times of our life. We must endure because the same shall be saved. Verse 14, And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And then shall the end come. This is referring to the fulfilling of the church's commission to reach the whole world with the message of Christ. Think about this. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. Isn't that what we're trying to do as the church? is to reach the gospel of Christ 
to, to reach the world with the gospel of Christ, go into every nation, every country with the gospel. Amen. That is what we're trying to do. Do not allow yourself to become desensitized to the end time events. These signs which Jesus spoke of in Matthew 24. We must not convince ourselves that it will be smooth sailing right before the church is raptured. And I think sometimes we get that in our mind. We think that, oh, everything's going to be great. It's going to be wonderful. No problems to have to worry about because we're just going to have the glory of God shining down upon us. Yes, we may have the glory of God shining down upon us, but there will be some times of adversity, some times of persecution. You know, I think about the Apostle Paul. You know, when he was, he was put to death, That was a time, I believe, that the glory of God was upon that man. Yes, the time that he was facing the hardest trial ever in his life. I believe that the Lord was, was moving upon him even as they killed him. According to Matthew, there will be sorrows and persecution prior to Christ's return. Persecution is what caused the early church to spread beyond Jerusalem. So how do we know if persecution won't play an important role in reaching the world in these last days? Persecution very well may cause us to spread out further into the world than what we have already. The stage is being set for the church of God to shine as it has never shined before. Now is the time to prepare, prepare for it because our time for action is running out. You know, the church will be ready. She will. She's making herself ready. The scriptures will be fulfilled. But I want to be one of those that are in the body of Christ that is preparing, that's working. I want to do my part in this preparation. So yes, the church of God is going to shine Shine brighter than it has ever shined before. Are you ready for it? Are you prepared? If not, I encourage you here tonight in this broadcast to ask the Lord to search your heart and to show you whether or not you are prepared. Will you bow your head with me and let's pray at this time. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you here in this evening. Lord, we are grateful for your word. Lord, we're grateful for your comfort, your strength, your glory, your power, Lord. Lord, that you just are going to shine down upon us. Father, even in the midst of adversity, when it's the most trying time of our life, I believe that the glory of God can still shine upon us. And I pray, God, that you would touch the hearts of the viewers tonight. Lord, that you would help them, Lord, with this message Lord, that their hearts be pricked if they are not prepared for your return. Lord, I want to be prepared and I hope that everyone here tonight in this broadcast has that same desire to be prepared. And Lord, I just, I just feel like I can't reiterate that enough on being prepared. And God, I just pray that you would touch somebody's heart tonight, Lord. Lord, that you would move upon them and help them to get where they need to be with you. Only you know what's going to transpire from this day forward with every individual, with every one of our lives. Only you know what's going to take pay, place. But God, I pray that you would help us all to be ready. To God be the glory forever and ever. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Real hope is the opposite of doubt. Of fear. Real hope won't let go no matter what the present circumstances may look like. Real hope 
saludos. Sí, sí. Mi nombre oh, es hermano James. James. Y soy el coordinador nacional de la DLB aquí en Inglaterra. Y quisiera compartir un testimonio con ustedes. Esto es algo que, con lo que el Señor realmente ha bendecido mi vida y, a, me, y cambió mi vida. Y a, durante mis días en la universidad, pude hacerme amigo de una de mis compañeras. Y era muy diferente de todos nosotros en el sentido que cómo se comportaba su conversación, su conducta, todo sobre ella era diferente. Y estaba sorprendido. Y así que conforme nuestra amistad crecía, le preguntaba ciertas preguntas de qué hacía en ciertos días. Y me decía que los martes tenía servicio, tenía conciertos los sábados, o tenía servicios de adoración los domingos en la mañana y en la tarde. Y eso me hizo darme cuenta por qué era diferente. Explicaba mucho porque yo no me daba cuenta que era una, una buena cristiana. Así que durante nuestra amistad me invitaba a visitar su iglesia local. Que a la invitación yo seguía posponiéndola por razones desconocidas. Y yo no tomaba la invitación seria. Pero era como cuatro años después cuando me decidí visitar su iglesia local. Y resultaba que era una convención, convención de ministros, y era una convención, y al cruzar yo esas puertas, sentí algo que no había sentido, y algo que no había sentido en otras iglesias. El compañerismo de los hermanos, el amor, la amistad, eso en serio me tomó, porque yo nunca había visto eso en las pocas iglesias que yo había visitado. Y cuando la adoración comenzó, la adoración era tan genuina, tan poderosa. God bless you, brothers of the Church of God, and especially to the VLB. My name is Jose Luis Gonzalez, National VLB Secretary in Panama, and we want to send greetings and a hug to every single young people. And God bless our brother Joshua Farting for this initiative to reach our young people during these hard times. We know we couldn't have our youth rally that was set for these days, but we have decided to reach you throughout these videos. And I want to share a scripture at this moment that we find in Numbers chapter 6, 
verses 24 to the 27 and says, The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. God bless every single one of the BOBs in the Church of God. And God bless you. Hey brothers, God bless you. Carlos Aviles greets you, BOB leader in Honduras. And it's a blessing being able to be in this live broadcast. And this is a perfect time because at least here in Honduras, we took in a good way the decision with our national overseer, Julio Cesar Cruz, to cancel the VLB camp due to the situation in the world. But God is perfect and accomplishes words when He says all things help us for good. And our district and local VLB leaders are having their programs taking the needed measures. Some are having uh, normal services, other have prayer services, but the VLB is always working and it's always moving. And this is a perfect time for the VLB, just like Paul said, study to show thyself, a proven to God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, and that's our part now on these days. Prepare and seek God so he can give us strength spiritually so when we go back to the churches then we will be able to praise and surrender to the Lord with more freedom because he is supporting our lives he supports our hearts with his presence so God bless you greatly and every single one that is watching this broadcast God bless you And now for the moment we all have been waiting for tonight. I am very excited to introduce to you here tonight our very own Gleaner representative, Victor the Victorious. Come on out, Victor. All right, here is Victor the Victorious. Victor, how about a high five? Yeah, there we go. I am very excited to have Gleaner, uh, Victor here tonight, our Gleaner representative, uh, he is actually from England, and so he got here about a week ago, and um, how, how was your flight, Victor? Yeah? Oh, okay, yeah. Okay, Victor said his flight was good. He uh, caught a ro ride over here on the UPS cargo jet. Huh, that's interesting. I've never flown in a UPS cargo jet, Victor. Yeah, but we are very excited to have you here tonight. Um, so, can you tell us... Can you tell us what your uh, favorite scripture is here? Yeah? Oh, that is good. I like that one. All right, his favorite scripture is John 3, 16. You know that one. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Is that right, Victor? Yes, that's right. I just want to say to all of the viewers watching tonight, if you have a question for Victor... I want you to go ahead and send that to us, and we're going to try to answer some of those questions that you send. Of course, Victor's not going to be able to answer all of them tonight, and maybe he will get to, uh, maybe after the broadcast sometime tonight or the next few days, he'll try to answer your questions, uh, maybe on Facebook or something. Uh, but if you have a question for him, something you're wanting to know, just go ahead and send that right now, if you will. All right. Okay, so another question uh, for Victor here tonight is, what is your favorite Bible character? Yeah? Okay. Yeah, all right. His favorite character is Jesus. And he wants to model his life just after Jesus. And that is very good, Victor, because Jesus is exactly how we should live our life by. Exactly. Uh, he was our perfect example, so we need to live it exactly by him. Amen. All right, at this time, we want to um, um, have a, another question. Do we have any more questions that's come through? Any more questions online? Okay, I tell you what, we're going to go to our trivia question. Will you help me out with that, Victor? All right, we're going to have a trivia question here tonight. And the first person that will be able to answer this question 
you're going to receive one of those hype t-shirts that we showed you earlier. Here's a question. What does the Lord prepare in the presence of our enemies? Okay, we'll have the answer in just a moment. What does the Lord prepare in the presence of our enemies? Okay, so at this time, does anyone have any more questions for Victor? Okay, someone wants to know if you're a knight. Are you a knight, Victor? Yes, yeah. Yeah, he's got the knight costume and all. He's set up real good. And another question someone has is, have you seen any battles before? Yeah, okay. All right, so he's seen some battles and he's fought some. And what did you defend? Would you mind telling me? What would you do? Yeah. Okay, he was defending the gleaners and also defending the word of God. Always ready to defend and uh, fight that old devil when that devil comes around. Is that right? All right, we'll see. Uh, is there any more questions online? Anyone else have a question for Victor? If you do, you can go ahead and send that in. Okay, we have a question. And, Victor, someone wants to know how old that you are. So, do you mind telling us how old? Okay. All right. All right. Victor says that he is a gleaner in heart, but does not want to reveal his age. Okay. So, he's a gleaner in heart, but don't want to reveal his age. All right. Anyone else? Oh, here's another question somebody just uh, submitted. What is your favorite color? Blue. He loves blue. And that's exactly what the uh, VLB logo is. Our blue shield. All right, anyone else? All right, Victor, someone else is just asking how much that you love Jesus. How much? A little bit? Live? Uh, hmm. How much? You like Jesus a lot? Yeah, absolutely. All right. This much, maybe? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Anyone else have a question for Victor? Okay, Victor, one question someone submitted was, what is your favorite piece of armor? Okay. Okay says that his favorite piece of armor is his shield. It represents the gleaners, and that's just his, his favorite piece of armor. He can put that shield up any time the devil throws those fiery darts at him. That's good. I like that. I might need one of those shields. Okay, so, all right, I tell you what, at this time, um, we'll come back to the questions, if that's okay. Can we come back? And just ask a few more questions in just a moment. But we want to announce the winner of the one who shared the broadcast. All right. The one selected for the broadcast, I believe, is Brett Defani. Congratulations. You are the winner of the Visa gift card. Congratulations. We'll get that in the mail to you as soon as possible. But send us your address. Uh, do it in an email, a private message or something so that we can get this card to you as soon as possible. All right, do we have any more questions for Victor the Victorious? Oh, oh okay, somebody just asked, um, where do you want to work and how hard do you want to work? Is that right? Really? Yeah. Oh, well, that's cool. All right, so Victor says that right now he's satisfied working in the gleaner department. And he wants to work as hard as he can for Christ and the church. But he also said, now listen to this, that he wants to eventually one day work for the Victory Leaders Band. And he wants to be the best VOB that he can be. I like that answer. All right, does anyone else have a question? Okay, someone asked a question if they could uh, see your sword and your shield. 
Can you show them your sword and shield? We'll use this camera right over here. Right over here, Victor. Right, hey, Victor. <laughs> right here. Yeah, there, show them your sword and your shield. Show them what you can do with it. Yeah, there we go. All right. Anyone else have a question for Victor tonight? Okay, so we'll come back to maybe uh, another question or two for Victor. We're going to go ahead and do the winner of the trivia question. And let's see who the winner is for the trivia. Okay, the answer to this trivia question is a table. All right, a table is prepared in the presence of our enemies. And this is Psalms 23 and 5. And the winner of this trivia question is... Mary Soul Randon. Mary Soul Randon. And Haley Finch. Congratulations to both of you uh, for getting that trivia question. We'll get these hype t-shirts sent out to you. Let us know your size. Uh, send us a private message um, with your address as, long, as well as your size so we can get that sent to you. Congratulations. Okay, we just had another question come in for Victor. Victor, someone wants to know, will you be marching in the VLB march at the assembly? Yes, yes. You're going to be excited about that march, aren't you? Hey, you, you need to lead the march. You know that? I like that. I like that idea. Anyone else have a question for Victor tonight? Okay, someone wants to know if Victor can show... Uh, the viewers of battle pose. What would you do going into battle, Victor? All oh, right. Is there any other battle poses? All right. Good job, Victor. Anybody else have a question for Victor? Are you up for taking a few more questions? Yeah, okay. All right, does anyone else have a question? And if Victor can't get to all the questions tonight, then he'll get to it later on. But we'll do our best to make sure that he's able to answer them for you. Okay, another, that's a good question that just come in, Victor. Someone wants to know, what does it mean to be a gleaner? Yeah. Okay, that's good. All right, he says to be a gleaner means, first of all, to have Jesus in your heart and to do your best to live for him and obey those that have the rule over you, obey your parents, um, honor them, but also uh, to one day be a member of the church of God. That's what being a good gleaner is, right? To be a good member of the church of God. All right. Okay, there's another question coming in. Victor, are you ready to fight against the enemy? Absolutely. He is nodding his head. Yes, he is ready to fight against the enemy. That's right. All right, anybody else? All right, someone wants to know, Victor, how often that you pray. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's good. Victor says that um, about how often to pray, he thinks about Daniel in the Bible, where Daniel had prayed three times a day. But the scripture also says to pray without ceasing. So when you're not able to, you know, to go somewhere and kneel down um, three times a day, to make sure that you're praying all throughout the day, whatever it is you're doing, just meditate upon God and talk to him. Pray to the Lord any time of the day. So pray three times a day, but also pray throughout the day. Okay, you know what? I think that would um, be good for us if, if we just take the prayer request that has come in already and pray for them. Would that be okay with you, Victor? If we could do that? Sure. All right, so Victor's going to help me pray over the request that you have sent in already, and we're just going to name uh, a few names. Um, remember Haley uh, Finch's cousins. Um, also Karen Polson. Uh, she found out today that she has lupus. Uh, Karen Owen, 
uh, excuse me, April Owen and her daughters uh, need prayer. Uh, Karen's Carn City, Pennsylvania, VOBs desires prayer. Um, and then also Sister Kent from uh, Moulton, Alabama, she needs prayer. And also Lanny Carter needs prayer. And there might be some other requests that are coming in online right now. Um, we're not able to, to mention every name, but the Lord knows exactly who it is that, um, that needs prayer right now. So, Victor, would you mind us just getting together and praying for these requests? Would that be okay with you? All right, so we're going to pray and we're going to seek the Lord and bind our faith together tonight and ask God to move upon these needs. You know, these are people that really need a touch from God. They need divine intervention and I know without a, without a doubt that God can do this tonight. Okay, so we're going to pray together and ask for God to move upon these requests here. So if you all would, just bow our heads with us as we pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you here this night. We thank you for this time that you have given us to come together in this broadcast. Lord, we're thankful for this time with Victor, the victorious. And, and Lord, for blessing him um, uh, Lord, for just blessing us with him. And we just pray for your blessing upon the gleaner department that you would just move upon all of those gleaners and, and help them, Lord, to, to seek you with all of their heart, soul, mind, and strength, God. And we just pray that you would just bless them tremendously. And Father, we pray for these requests that we've had uh, been turned in here tonight. We pray, God, that you would just minister to each and every one. You know exactly who they are. You know exactly what their needs are, God. And we pray, Lord, that you would intervene on their behalf, Lord. Father, there are some that are calling out to you right now, God. Lord, and they're calling out to you in the midst of their desperation, God. And we pray, Lord, that the Holy Ghost just minister to them and meet their needs at this very same hour, God. Father, for we look to you. You're the author, the finisher of our faith. And Father, I pray, let the faith that you have given us tonight, let it, let it work, God. Lord, let it rise up in us. We believe it now in the precious and wonderful name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank the Lord. Okay, we want to say thank you all for watching tonight. And thank you, Victor, for being here in this broadcast. I'm excited to have you here. I'm excited for the gleaner department. I really am. And it makes me want to kind of go back and be a cleaner again. Um, but I'm excited for the cleaner department. I'm excited for the Victory Leaders Band. All right. So let's all work together for the Lord. Amen. And I do want to say that we are grateful for you tuning in for this special broadcast tonight. We hope to continue this if the Lord permits us to. But I also want to mention, please tune in on August 24th for the Time of Refreshing broadcast. There's going to be broadcast right here from General Headquarters every day that week. All right, so please be sure to tune in. And may the Lord bless you. Have a wonderful night.